Good evening, welcome to Stafford City Council. <clears throat> Reminder, if you have a cell phone, please turn it off and roll call. I think we're a full um, Pledge of Allegiance. It's going to be offered by <clears throat> Vice Mayor Ortega, followed by the invocation by Councilman Mike Hanazola. Would you stand and remain standing for both, please? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day to throw it upon us, Lord. We ask that you please come upon us tonight as we make decisions for this great community. We are thankful for our city manager, our clerk, our department heads, our employees, Lord. We give you thanks. And also, Lord, we thank you for this last weekend that we had with our Parks and Recreation Committee. We thank you for having them aboard with us to give us guidance and how they see the city and we just ask you to please bless this wonderful place where it's a great place to visit, live, and work. And we also ask a blessing upon our mayor this evening, Lord. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Councilman. <clears throat> Citizen comments on agenda item and, uh, and non agenda. <clears throat> I'm gonna go a little bit slow so I can keep up with myself here. So <clears throat> hopefully my voice will go a little bit better. Um, item seven, <clears throat> new and biz, new and uh, new and old business tenants. Um, B, go ahead with that one. A request uh, for mayor and city council to review and approve the minutes for March 6th council meeting, March 13th council meeting, and the March 27th council meeting. You have a motion. Second. Does everybody have a chance to preview those and they're okay with them all? Yes, sir. Have a motion and a second to approve the uh, new and old business minutes 
All those in favor? Aye. If any opposed, motion passes. Thank you. <clears throat> Brings to item 7-2, which is the 2022-2023 budget change authority for an additional pension mm -hmm. contribution. Um, Brock. Mayor, before we get started, I'd like to notice the presence of Supervisor Paul David. Okay, thank you so much. So, uh, thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Uh, staff is here tonight asking for your approval of $600,000 in budgeted uh, general fund contingency in the current year to make an additional payment to the public safety personnel retirement system. Uh, if you recall, uh, last February, February 8th of 2022, uh, the city council did uh, authorize the issuance of a pension obligation bonds uh, to deal with an approximate $13.1 million in unfunded liability. Uh, the city's uh, con uh, bond consultants did ultimately sell about 2.5 million of those bonds, and that was uh, placed on in our account within public safety uh, retirement system. City staff is recommending that we we do the difference. That $600,000 out of the current year contingency funds are available in both contingency as well as above the line in the general fund fund balance. Uh, that way, it would get us back to that objective that the council had authorized uh, back in 2022 to get us at near 100% uh, funded and to deal with the most of that $13.1 million in underfunded liability. So as of June 30, 2022, uh, given the fact that we made that, uh, that bond proceed payment, uh, the city is just under 93% funded uh, and making this additional payment that'll bring us closer to the 95 all else being equal uh, and let the market uh, adjustment happen over time uh, based on how the market conditions are happening. Uh, as the bond council really was seeking to hold those $600,000 back in the first place. Uh, so, Mayor, members of the council, uh, staff is requesting uh, your authority and approval tonight to use $600,000 in existing uh, general fund contingency uh, to make that additional payment to the public safety personnel retirement system. Rob, Thank you very much. Rob, you probably talked about this at a prior meeting that I wasn't available to attend. Um, and maybe you just addressed it. I don't know if I heard it the, the way I guess I wanted to hear it. How did we end up 600 plus thousand short? So mayor uh, and members of the council. Uh, so what, when, the council, when the council did authorize that 13.1 million, our bond consultants, bonds council, uh, what they were trying to do is not have us be overfunded, meaning to be at about 101 to 103 percent of, of our, uh, our, our needed actuarial value. Uh, the bond council had seen that in other jurisdictions to where they tried to pay off that full value only to see the market increase and then you would have been overfunded uh, so their thought was to look at the smoothing over time and to hold back 600,000 at the time they did make those bond sale uh, make that bond sale happen uh, given the fact that fiscal 22 or all of calendar 2022 and even the latter part of 21 uh, had some rough roads uh, just given the market conditions uh, if, if others were looking at their own financials. Uh, given that, we want to get back to what would it have been to get, have us at 100% uh, and then deal with that market fluctuation, which is roughly that $900,000 in difference. You're right about right now, as of June 30, about $1.5 million in unfunded liability. Uh, so all else being equal, we're trying to get back to what would it have been all else being equal if we did the 13.1 uh, and then ride the market conditions up and down as they happen, as well as employee conditions as they happen. Uh, new people are hired if they're tier one, uh, as people retire, and what that does to our, our, our unfunded liability at that point. And so our, our uh, contingency funds, where do we stand with that right now? And what can contingency funds be used for? Certainly, so mayor, members of the council, each year, um, uh, every jurisdiction, just like Safford, does uh, budget for a specific value of contingency. What that allows this council to do, or any council, is to take those contingencies and spend it on something that wasn't anticipated. Uh, that very well could be like you, you have already done in regards to electrical cost, uh, right, our purchase of power uh, in authorizing contingency there. Here we're using that contingency, and we're already seeing that our revenues are coming in much stronger in the current year. Uh, we've recognized one-time money that's happening right now, uh, given uh, changes in uh, state law relative to individual income tax. We're seeing a bump up of that uh, based on negotiations between the league and the state uh, legislator last year. Uh, so we're already looking at more than that $600,000 
in one-time revenue that's hitting the general fund in the current year. But from a budgetary standpoint, we need to move the contingency authorization into an expendable line, expendable line item in order to, to write that check to PSPRS. I'll move we approve the 2022-23 budget change authority for an additional pension contribution, 600,000. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the contingency funds for 600K. Any discussion? Mayor. Just, a, just a quick clarification, Rob. Um, yes. If I remember correctly, too, once we're 100% funded, we're still going to have annual, uh, depending on the market, uh, either additional payments, uh, hopefully not to stay at 100%. That was the po part of the point of bonding was to get us back to that point and then manage it annually from then. Yep, that is on. correct, Mayor, Mayor and Council Member. Uh, what this allows to do, and even at the time the council last year authorized the pension obligation bond, it was to have that you know, multi-generational equity, that way it would be paid for over time. But the, the process in the system, as well as the state statutes, requires every employer to still do their annual required contribution. Uh, so that, that could range depending on what your current um, unfunded liability right. may be. Uh, so moving forward, just like into next year, uh, we're going to be right around 21% of our payroll cost will need to go to, to PSPRS as a required contribution above what's already sitting there as an asset. Right. Thank you. Go ahead. And it's uh, the police department's salaries is what affects the amount we pay annually? Yes, Mayor and Council Members, that is, that is correct. So that annual required contribution percentage is based upon the salaries of those officers or sworn personnel that are in those specific tiers under PSPRS. Uh, so there's a tier one, tier two, tier, tier three. One and two pretty much have the same rate. Three can be different depending on the type of selection of the benefit officer. Uh, so, Mayor, members of the council, if they're if they are um, being paid out of the city's um, process, so if that is overtime that is incurred and paid through our payroll, then those those expenses would be subject to that rate. Yes. Sound great. So, yeah, Mayor, members of the council, anything that would be grant funded would also be because they're acting in the, in, in, in the way as a peace officer under the employment of the city of Safford. Correct. Right, so that is all budgeted relative to what we would expect of those, uh, of those revenues that we would get through a grant. Uh, so if we, as an example, if we anticipate $300,000 of expense, which would include overtime, PSPRS and other benefits expenses, and then we recognize 300,000 in revenue budgetarily, it's all included into that. They may not work $300,000 in that year, but at least we're budgeted to do so. But those grants will cover reasonable uh, and required, um, statutorily required expenses, which this is one. <clears throat> Any more discussion? Okay, so the motion stays the same. All those in favor? Uh, Any opposed? The motion passes. Okay. Bring us to item 8 1, resolution 23 10, R23 10, PSPRS pension funding policy. Rob, you're back up. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, members of the council, staff is recommending approval of resolution R23 010. It is a resolution adopting the fiscal 23 24 public safety personnel retirement system pension funding policy. Uh, so state statute does require each jurisdiction uh, that has employees within the public safety personnel retirement system to adopt a pension funding policy annually. Uh, this is a relatively new requirement since 2018. The legislature did pass this requirement and that policy needs to have on an annual basis needs to have at least three things. One of them is that we as an employer are accepting the findings of the most recent audit. So basically you are agreeing to the listing of assets and liabilities uh, that the auditors have identified. Second, it's also defining when does the city seek to be at 100% funded. Uh, a number of years ago when this was passed, most jurisdictions 
a chose a date somewhere in the future to give themselves flexibility. And that's what the city of Safford had done. So that's why if you look in your packet and you looked at the policy, it would show June 30 of 2048 is when we desire to be at a fully funded at 100%. And the third thing that is required is that you will commit to making those annual required contributions, just the council member had indicated, uh, in which for fiscal 23-24, we're estimating at about $315,000 uh, all in for our public safety personnel. So the draft policy in the staff report in your packet identifies that the city has increased its funding ratio from about 32% or so, just under 93%. And that was mainly because of that uh, that pension obligation bond, where it's basically taking that infusion of cash, putting it into our assets uh, for it to then make that, that unfunded liability go down. And it went down from 13.1 to 1.5 million. So mayor and members of the council, staff is recommending approval of resolution R23-010, the adoption of the fiscal 23-24 public safety personnel retirement pension funding policy. Uh, thank you for your consideration and see if you have any other additional questions. Okay, a motion. I'll move we approve resolution R23-010, the, P, the PSR P, uh, funding policy. Second. Okay, we have a motion second to approve resolution R23-10 PSPRS pension funding policy. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Um, B, would you please read that in? Approval of resolution number R23-010, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Safford, Arizona, adopting a public safety personnel retirement system pension funding policy. Thank you. <clears throat> Item nine, which is, <clears throat> which is the finance report, P card report. Do you have a chance to look at that, Councilman Lopez? I'm good. Sir. I I did have questions. I you answered them. Uh, I like to hear them in the meeting. Dang it! <laughs> I like I like to see feathers get ruffled. Well, I I know everybody thinks I haggle over one penny, and I do, but you know I just small ones, and I address them to the manager. And, okay. You needed a good laugh. I give it to you. But oh, I, 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 did, I guess I'll seek that afterwards. I did see a lot of new names on here, and uh, they seem to be describing and defining what they spend the money on, which makes it a lot easier to uh, know what it was spent on. I like the addresses, so I can go check them out to see how how good our work is, which it usually is good work, and. Uh, Remember the things I see out of it, but I'm good this time. Okay, there. perfect. How about expenses over five thousand? Moving right along, expense or revenue over five thousand. Everybody have a chance to preview all those, and they're good with them. Okay, we're going to move on to ten. Announcement of current events. <clears throat> Does anybody have anything under current events? Anything coming up, Council Manazola? Uh, nothing that I know of, Mayor. Okay. Go ahead, Sean. Two current event items. Mr. Henry's going to lead with one, and then uh, Chief Orr is going to come up after him. Yeah, good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. I just wanted to stand up and just <clears throat> give you all an invite. Um, a week from tomorrow, we're going to have our first public meeting on our Discovery and 8th Avenue Park meeting with our designer. I'll send out a flyer. I'll have to um, notice it as a public meeting. So um, if we do have a quorum show up, we'll be okay. We'll be meeting with the designer, going over some preliminary. Um, ideas, some themes for the park, that kind of stuff. And we'll be meeting with the Parks Advisory Committee in, an hour before the meeting. But it'll be in this room uh, a week from tomorrow at 6 p.m. Um, I'll make sure you all get the flyer. I sent it to Mo. I was going to pull it up on the screen, but I'll, I'll make sure I get emailed to all of you. Thanks. Thank you. Chief Four. <laughs> Uh, to begin with, uh, we are doing uh, Dump the Drugs this Saturday at Home Depot with Thatcher Police Department, just to let you all know, Mayor and Council uh, and the public. And uh, other than that, um, Mayor, Vice Mayor and Council members, I'd like to take a moment, if you don't mind, and and uh, thank you. Uh, this is my last council meeting before retirement. Uh, so I'd like to thank you and the manager, department heads and the staff of the city of Safford 
and probably most importantly, the citizens of Safford and the community of the Gila Valley for an opportunity to serve, to protect, to uh, perform the duties of this job. It's been a long career. It's been a great career. It's been a great experience. And I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank you all very much for the opportunities you've given me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to serve with you. <clears throat> Request for future agenda items. I think I may have one on the events. On but I current events going back. I, oh, okay. so I didn't want to touch on them too much because I think we're going to get them touched on here later. I did want to mention, and I'd be sad if I didn't touch. One of the events that took place was the passing of March Shade. Um, Certainly an icon of the Valley has been in this room several times for events. He, he was uh, out there at all, every event, and uh, I'm certainly going to miss seeing her, and I'm sure this community is going to miss her, and I just wanted her to be recognized by us. And uh, Definitely a hard individual to replace. Yes, sir. So I, I just wanted to say that there. Appreciate that so well taken. All right, going back to item 11, request for future agenda items. Anybody have any? Uh, Mayor, I have a question for you. Uh, did CICUS put in a permit for bingo? Um, so we did receive two applications for bingo. Um, they unfortunately were not turned in in time because per state law, we do have to give a public notice 15 days before the uh, public hearing. So they were a few days late on turning in their application. So they will be presented hopefully May 8th. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So do you want that to that on the I'm going to ask you to discuss it with me and all that. And I'm going to seek us. I want to make sure we get this done. And Mayor, they'll, they'll be on the next. Thank you, so, Manager. Anybody else have any? Go ahead. I uh, in, in the future, and I'm hoping, I don't know where it is, but I'd like to see, we don't have a historian that I know of. Somebody keeping track of the things we've been doing and putting dates on them and stuff like this weekend, we put the moved the earth for the trees and stuff. And I don't know that anybody logs that down and keeps a history of it. And so I just like to put that idea in somebody's head. It's like uh, Fireman's Park. I don't know when that got named that. I'm not opposed to the name, but there's things that are going by the city that I don't think are getting written down and keep track of so just an idea in there. Okay, so let's bring that as an agenda item so we can discuss it, because I, I I agree with you and I'd like to hear some more. Maybe you can bring us a little bit more stuff too. So definitely put that one down. Anybody else have anything? Um, I have one. Um, and uh, this is just because, and, uh, are, we, are we following in line with our budget process or on our budget for the finance director or are we over budget? Um, because it's been a very long time since the finance director has been replaced. We're using an outside source and we're also bringing in another outside source and we're also using staff in the role as finance director. And so an individual is being used in finance director part to grab information, but yet his role is something different. And so how are you keeping track of those times or are you not? And so it's just going to come back as yes, as a zero budget which I won't agree with, you know I won't. But never, nevertheless, I would like to know where we stand currently with how much money we have spent on not replacing this position. Sure, uh, Mayor, members of council. Yeah, when we when we contract out for the finance director position in the end, it probably will cost us more than it would have been if we had a person in that position. Um, staff, as with most things, staff supports that position in any way they can. Uh, and we've gotten some outside assistance intermittently in order to support that role. So the cost will be higher in the finance budget at the end of the year. And of course, as you know, at the end of the year, we do reconciliations across the board. So again, the budget is a plan. Some budgets will be higher, some will be lower. And in the end, you reconcile those, you know, to the budget as long as you don't exceed your cap. So we will bring that usually at end of year, you'll see those adjustments. We've brought those in the past. We'll bring them again. Um, it is my hope that that is coming to an end here very shortly, and, and it looks like that may be the case. I don't want to say 100%, but 
hopefully it will be. But yeah, I mean, when we lost our finance director, and this is going to impact some other things as well, um, it kind of, first of all, getting a finance director anywhere right now is very difficult. So uh, the discussion we're going to have tonight in another capacity, we're going to address this issue as well as trying to have uh, succession planning in place in the future so that there's a number two in these positions so that should we run into this situation again, there's someone that will be capable of stepping in and filling that role. So the short answer to your question is yes, we spent more money than we otherwise would have. We really didn't have much of a choice. Uh, and those numbers will be brought to you as they are every year at year end and you'll see that reconciliation. Can I get current spendings numbers next meeting? Sure. Um, and uh, um, I think I would like to see that. And because um, I think we have capable staff that's here. I just feel like we're holding on a little bit too long for I don't know what, but nevertheless, sometimes the right person is right in front of you and you just got to do a little bit of training, hands-on training with them. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Item 12, report on operational items. Jamie, you're up first. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, as we've discussed earlier, there are several events that the Parks and Recreation Committee has been participating in and hosting the last couple of months. We've had a movie night and we've also had Earth Day and the committee is here to say a few words and give you a, a quarterly update on their progress. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, thank you for having us tonight. So um, on April 1st, we had a movie night at Glen Meadows Park, and it was a really awesome event. Um, we're excited to be here tonight. We're really excited for the park to get going. Um, but anyways, back to the movie night, we um, gave free popcorn out to residents. There was about 150 community members that showed up, um, and they were out on the lawn at Glen Meadows Park. It was a really fun event um, to host together. Um, we've been having a lot of fun together, spending time together, and then on Earth Day, April 22nd, we also did the groundbreaking ceremony um, for some of the beautifications and the different tasks that we'll have from you guys. Um, and Tony's going to share a little bit about our stars, and yeah, go ahead. Actually, I'm allowed one of our youth to do it. Hi, my name is Callie Lewis. Um, I was able to take part in the Earth Day on the 22nd and it was so much fun um, me and Alicia we both participated and it was a really really amazing experience just to make a difference in our community and to also help out with the beautification and we're super excited to see those those plants and trees getting um, actually put in where they are going to be and it was an amazing experience and I'm super happy that we were able to take part in it I'm Alicia Berenger, and I'm talking about our movie night. We had it. It was on April Fool's, April 1st. Um, it was really nice because we were able to see like all kinds of families get together and just like hang out, and they didn't even have to spend like any money, and they were just able to all come together as a giant community. And it was a really good hit. A lot of people came, and just seeing like all the little kids and like their parents just be able to get together and watch a friendly movie was a really good experience to be part of. Share on that too. Um, the price of going to the movies is really expensive. I don't know if you guys have been to the movies recently, but to go see a movie as a family is like a family of four is going to be well over like 50 bucks just to get in to have a popcorn and to have a soda. And we were just sharing how cool that event was to see families come and they seen got to see a new release um, probably something that a family wouldn't be able to do if you were in a lower income family so that was really cool too i would like to thank you guys for um allowing us to take part of that and to listen to the youth um the graham county stars they went ahead and brought this to the table this is something they wanted to do that they seen that our community needed to take part 
in a family event. Um, they want to do more in our community, and it was a great opportunity for them to be part of it. And, you know, I have a few. Um, there's about 10 volunteers that come, youth from Safford High School, that come and volunteer, and they work hard between high, between high school, between jobs, between sports. They find the time to come out and give back to our community. Um, I have one that she's even in the Army, you know, she takes off for the weekends, but with the time she comes in, she takes a big part in it. And I mean, they work, they work really hard and they keep their grades up and they take pride in what they do. And they, they're there ahead of time to help set up. They're there after to clean up. So they, they take really big pride in what they're doing, but we couldn't do it without you guys for listening to them and, you know, what they want and what they see that the community needs, especially teenagers. It's so hard to find something for the teenagers to do, especially during the summer. So that, but thank you. Thank you all for um, just listening and letting them be part of this. So thanks. Thank you. And Tony, on behalf of my daughter, I want to say thank you. <laughs> my pleasure. Enjoy your, yes, go ahead. We also are really hoping that with the summer and everything, we'll be doing more community activities and um, the Gila Stars are going to be definitely trying to plan more things that we can involve our whole community in that will be super fun and maybe something that we've never done before as a community as well. Mrs. Rogers, I want you to know that I was never opposed to the park be built. I was opposed to the way we were going to be spending that kind of funds. I'm super ecstatic for the park recs to start moving forward and uh, um, see that done. Like I want it done yesterday. I would like to see Main Street be used in the daytime events. And then when it got, wants to go longer than 1030, I'd love for Double R Sounds to be moving it out there and party all night. All you're going to do is wake the dead. Yes. And so I think that's, uh, uh, I, I would love to see it, you know. And Tony, the, the kids, they bust their keister because they're probably scared of you. <laughs> I'm just teasing, Tony. You know I love you. Sir. You know I love you. <laughs> and Mayor, no need for an apology. It was very understandable that what you presented. Um, you're, you're a hardworking man, and so you were presenting that the money be spent wisely, and that was very understandable. So. That's all we have. Thank you. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and close our regular. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, utility staff metering, audit, and billing. Uh, James, I almost got you off the head, man. I think Arnold would have stopped me. Yeah. Good evening, Mayor Council. I'm here to present to you an overview of the dance metering infrastructure. Utilities and business service process for metering, audits, and billing. So to start, I'd like to go over the current meter coverage that we have around the area. So the, currently, the city of Safford maintains roughly 17,200 meters within Safford and the surrounding areas. Each utility has approximately 5,000 electric meters, 3,600 gas meters, and 8,300 water meters. With this amount of meter coverage, it's important for staff to follow a clear internal operating procedure so the city can ensure accurate meter information for billing. So I provided with this slide photos of each meter for you to view. Uh, each meter has their own parts, but the main parts we are going to discuss tonight are just the meter and the smart point. Uh, the meter is a piece of equipment that recognizes and reads electricity, gas, and water flow that goes from the city of Safford system to the customer's res residence and or business. The smart point is the piece of equipment that sends the reads and data from the meter to the base stations and the census system. So on the left here, we have an electric meter. The, the meter and smart point are built together. In the middle, we have a gas meter. The plastic, the plastic housing right here where the, where the reads and dials are located uh, also house the smart point. And on the right, we have a water meter uh, right here. Uh, the, plastic the plastic housing on top is a smart point that is attached to an antenna on the meter box lid. So the Advanced Metering Infrastructure Department is tasked with the daily monitoring of all meters, active and vacant, 
to ensure they are reading and reporting correctly to our base stations, which is then sent to the census system. The City of Stafford currently has four base stations, one in Quail Ridge, one near Discovery Park, one near Thunderbird, one near Thunderbird Road south of town, excuse me, <clears throat> and one near the airport. So the base station diagnostics are monitored daily by census, AMI, electric, and IT departments. Diagnostics include radio frequencies, last time communicate, communicated with the census systems, as well as a plethora of other communication options. All meters report data to their nearest base station every four hours. If a meter detects any issues, it will send an alarm to the census system. Alarms can range from leaks to tampering to reverse flow, last time communicated to the base stations, etc. AMI also works on a metering exception report every month before billing to verify if all reads have been collected, as well as ensure that meter usage on all accounts are reading in between a high and low range of a certain percentage from the previous month and previous year's usage. So here I have a few examples on how the exception report works. For example, one, the exception report says X customers used 10,000 gallons of water this month, 2,000 gallons last month, and 11,000 gallons of water last year. AMI can make a safe assumption that this customer uses more water currently around this time, but will investigate the usage using the census system to rule out any water leaks. On example two, the exception report says Y customer uses 100 units of gas this month, 30 units of gas last month, and 25 units of gas last year. This would be a red flag for AMI to notify the gas department to verify for any potential leaks, as this customer has more than tripled and quadrupled the usage from last month and last year. <clears throat> In regards to calibration, AMI has equipment to test if antennas and smart points are working and reporting to the base stations. AMI does not have calibration equipment for the meters themselves. Instead, they will conduct flow tests to see if the meters recognize the amount flowing through the meter. If citizens question if their water meter is reading accurately, AMI or the water department can get a 10-gallon bucket and fill it up and verify that the meter reads that 10 gallons flow through. For gas, AMI or the gas department will flow some gas through the meter to verify that the dials are rotating. If citizens want it tested further, the city can send the meter to Dana Kepner, which is our meter uh, provider, uh, for their engineers to test. In the event a customer's meter stops working completely and didn't register any usage for a month, according to Section 13.04.080 of City of Safford Code, the charge, quote, the charge for that utility service shall equal the charge for the same service for a like period, end quote. If the meter hasn't been replaced by that time, it will then be replaced to receive usage for the next billing period. Business services will also run monthly and yearly auto reports of all of the meters in the field at the end of each fiscal year. Audits include information over the past month and year, such as any multipliers, meter sizes, locations, installation dates, rates, etc. These audits are important because it gives the city additional opportunities to review our data and ensure accuracy between all departments. So far, communication from all departments has been successful regarding these audits over the past two years since we implemented our standard operating procedure regarding meter installations. <clears throat> Meters and smart points are rated for 20 years with 100% 100%, excuse me, capture rate and are under warranty for 10 years. If at any point we have a meter or smart point that is not reporting correctly or seems to be dying out soon, as long as it's in that 10-year window, Dana Kepner will replace it with a brand new one. So it's important that we are closely monitoring our installation dates. AMI and utility departments have already begun replacing meters and smart points in the field that have been out closer to 10 years. And departments will be, will be budgeting more in the future for replacement meters and smart points to get ahead of any equipment that may show signs of aging. And I want to close by saying that meter diagnostics are constantly being monitored by AMI daily and monthly. And AMI's goal is to ensure, ensure the accuracy of the meter information for the city of Safford and the utility customers it provides for. That's all I have for you. I can answer any questions if you have any. Hi, <clears throat> Mr. Carvajal. I brought some of this stuff because I'm old school compared to you. So, you know, I backward the when the meters uh, worked manually, 
we were required, and that was the only way was to take them out of service and put them on a test stand to make sure they were calibrated cor correctly. Because uh, if you don't, if these meters and you have thousands of them, if they're not collecting all that we are putting out, we're losing money. And uh, that was my concern on that, the accuracy. You've seen through the years since you've been here, we've had a few of them that have been costly. And uh, I know these are digital now, so we kind of forget that we don't have to monitor them as much. But uh, listening to you, you seem to, uh, you have the answers for what I've been looking for on you. I, I think the only meter you send off are gas because you're sending them to camp. And the rest of them, I think you're saying you're just changing out if you have a question. But uh, you inherited, you came in uh, at a rough time. So you had to help build that department and all its knowledge and data. And uh, I personally think you've done well. But uh, it, we just haven't had a report in a long time on it. And we used to take neighborhood sections and change out all the meters to make sure we were had everything accurate. I know your water meters can tell a customer if their toilet leaked. Mm -hmm. And you have uh, programs to where customers like the idea if they do have a water leak, you know to buy them that you possibly have a water leak. And of course, that helps them with that. Uh, I, I'm just hoping, you know, what we have coming in to the substation, for example, is what we're gathering with uh, the income that we need and the accuracy. I know when you put in these meters, they captured every single thing. Customers thought we raised rates on them because of the difference in the digital and the analog ones. But uh, I thank you for bringing this uh, presentation and uh, uh, got confidence you're gathering the information. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and close the regular meeting and reconvene into a council work session. Item 14.1, Van Dam Chamber of Commerce <clears throat> contract renewal. Uh, Mayor, I'm going to lead in with the CCF on this, and then we'll I'll hand it over to the chamber. So, um, Staff tonight is seeking council di direction regarding the renewal of the Graham County Chamber of Commerce contract with the city of Safford. Staff is asking council to identify deliverables they wish to receive from the contractual relationship and the financial contribution they wish to provide to achieve their attended outcomes. Uh, the background city of Safford has an ongoing contractual relationship with the Graham County Chamber of Commerce. The current contract was a five-year agreement and set to expire June 30, 2023. Contract was intended to, and I quote, promote development, enhance tourism, economic development, and to provide service to support local businesses for the city. Uh, the contract is being discussed tonight will be for a period of five years, going from July 1st, uh, 2023 through June 30, 2028, with the stated purpose as follows, and I quote, the city hereby retains the chamber to provide economic support programs a leadership training program and to promote, develop, and enhance tourism. And again, those are taken from the contract itself. Analysis, the current contract is based on a portion of bed tax revenue with an annual contract allotment of $130,000 budgeted. Actual revenues dispersed under the contract are based on actual revenues received and the agreed upon allotment mechanism. Contract also allows for the disbursement of an additional $20,000, which is included in the 130 annually, a special revenue that was earmarked to purchase an electronic bulletin board, marketing materials to attract and retain City of Safford businesses, and various chamber advertisements. As written, the new agreement would provide a fixed monthly allotment of $15,000 per month for an annual total of $180,000. And I attach the uh, draft Chamber of Commerce contract uh, the Chamber and I have been working on. So with that, I will turn it over to Vance. Great. Thank you so much, Sean. And thank you for doing this work session. I like this format a lot better than the council meeting, so that'll be good. My name is Vance Bryce. I'm the executive director of the Graham County Chamber of Commerce. I'm here with Karina Pino Reyes. She's the president of the chamber board. She does business accounts at Valley Telecom Group. We've also got uh, Reed Richens. He's a past president for the Graham County board, uh, Chamber Board, and he's from Double R Communications. 
Tori Cranford is our treasurer. She's with the Eastern Arizona College Small Business Development Center. And Isaac Morris is our events co-chair. And he is with Man Mortgage. He's the branch um, operations manager at Man Mortgage. And then Brittany um, Hernandez, soon to be Brittany Dean on Saturday, is here as my assistant director. And Mo's getting this loaded for us. Nice timing. That's great. So I have a typo on this first line I just pointed out. I put the, um, no, I don't. It looks good. You fixed it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, John. <laughs> John fixed my typo. So the status quo, where are we at currently with the chamber? He, he spoke to this previous contract right now. Until June 30th, we receive 50% of the bed tax collected monthly. In addition to that, we've received $20,000 payments um, annually to pay for the highway marquee, the new highway marquee in front of the chamber. So that last payment was just made, and those are all done. Under this contract, the city dispersed 100, almost $156,000 to the chamber in 2022. Oops. Some of the strengths of that contract were it established expectations for both parties, it emphasized and funded by local campaigns, it empowered the chamber to staff the visitor center six days a week and create tours and marketing plans, um, and it created a really close relationship between city staff and chamber staff, and it's a great working relationship where we can text and call and meet, and it's been good to build those relationships. Some of the weaknesses of the agreement are that the 50% that comes in from bed tax varies greatly. In normal times, it's between $9,000 and $14,000. Uh, during COVID, it, it was as low as $3,000 for about six months, and the lowest was $3,000. So it was difficult during that time to make a plan on how funds were to be spent when we didn't know what would be coming in. We didn't really have a good average. And, and so we, we see that as a weakness of the previous agreement. Um, the contract also doesn't account for all the services that the chamber now provides to support the city. So we have a new innovative contract which emphasize, emphasizes stability. And I'm really excited to talk about it today. We've uh, been working with John and Jamie, uh, Karina and I, to come up with what we think is a way the city can leverage the talents of the folks over at the chamber and the contacts that we've got over there. So this would run, it would be a five-year contract starting this July, and it would be $15,000 a month or $180,000 annually. So some new, some of the things that are serving the city of Safford in this contract are direct support to the Planning and Community Development Department on events. So we've got uh, four employees over at the chamber that can help out with events and that can help out with marketing and implementing those events. And we have listed in the contract you see in your paperwork some specific things we can do too with a liaison to the film office, liaison to the tourism office in Phoenix and help Jamie out. And Jamie helps us out. It's a really good agreement. So... $10,000 of that 180,000. So not in addition to, but inclusive, 10,000 of that, um, we're setting aside for sponsorships for uh, other entities who do tourism events or community events, things that come up throughout the year that are, oh man, this is gonna bring people in here. Um, we can, we have something set aside for those events that come up. <clears throat> um, this is the first uh, if, if we are able to get our funding plan passed this year, this will be the first year that chamber staff will have access to some kind of benefits. And uh, the five-year contract gives us stability because we'll know for the next five years, this is what's coming in every month. And we can plan for five years that this is what's going to happen as long as we keep our side of the bargain and keep um, emphasizing the city. Hey, yes, sir. Just a question. Go for it. Like you guys get taken entering in a five year contract without without uh, figuring in uh, inflation. 
So, Every single contract that we have that the Safford that Safford enters in, there's always inflation. So you guys are going to be accepting this for five years. There ain't never going to be another COVID. So you can't even use that. No, I, I, guess, <laughs> yeah, I think the people woke up. But I'm, I will say that in five years, inflation is going to continue to increase. So you guys should have been negotiating to increase that within so much per, as well. So our average, what we were getting average was lower than and then we don't want to put all, we're, we're, as a, for our risk, we don't want to put everything in the city of Stafford funding us either. So we're going out to other other places and diversifying where we get that funding. Um, this will help us. <laughs> well, thank you for that suggestion. I know Arnold gets all, he gets all puckered up when I say that, but I, I know what you guys are doing. And I think you guys are doing a really good job. Well, thank you. Well, we, we're really excited about this agreement, so. You said yep. last time you were accepting 50% of bed tax. What do you, in this new contract agreement, uh, what approximately is that percentage? Because I'm not seeing that anywhere in this cost. So, so, so it's 20%. You just told me it was 50 last time. Okay. Uh, Mayor, members of council. But, but they just said 50%. Part of, the, part of the reason that we're changing it is because violate state statute in terms of the way we discuss our revenue streams. So the idea was that we have a fixed amount every month, which on the one hand benefits the chamber because they can budget on a certain amount. And the other is that we're not tying it to the bed tax and then publicly talking about a percentage of bed tax, which we're not supposed to be doing. What is the city of Stafford doing with the other 50%? Well, I don't know that it is 50%, but there's other things we support. That's that just are... I don't know what that in your... Sorry, go ahead. I just, you know me, I'm going to throw this stuff out there. Go ahead. Um, some other new benefits uh, come to city employees. So we have done, we've tried this out at Salsa Fest where we did meal vouchers uh, to all city staff. Uh, we kind of, we took them around to the departments and we've done it where we've done it through HR before. We're trying to figure out a good way to really get those vouchers out to city employees so that they can come to the event and at least their meal is paid for when they come and bring their family. We think that's a good benefit. We're also extending uh, membership benefits to all city employees. So if a city employee has a side business where they sell at a booth, they get the chamber membership price. If a city employee wants to participate in the chamber soiree, it'll anything that a chamber member can do, a city employee can do, which we think is really cool. All right, so let's look at some budget numbers. This is our budgeted revenue uh, if this plan is passed. And you'll see that our funding from local governments is a little over 50%. So that section right there, and I want you to, to remember that section because I'm going to refer to it during our expenses. Our event revenue is about 23%. Our membership dues is about 25%. So the model we're looking at, if you look at this section again, our expenses, payroll, and benefits, we're, we're, what we like to see is the local governments covering that stability, bringing the people to the chamber, the staff to the chamber, and covering that cost for us so that we can then go out and ask the private entities to get us money for those events. And so our events, we bring in all the sponsorship, all everything for it from private um, businesses, and then also the fees that are waived by this council for our special events. Thank you so much for that. And we then turn it around and spend it on the event. We get the event paid for doing that. And then our memberships, our business memberships, pay for all this, this other stuff. It's not directly $1 to $1 when everything comes in, but that's, kind of, that's the model we're looking at. You pay for four people to come in, and we'll, we'll go out and find money. We'll match it. We'll go out and more than match it. It's our goal in the next uh, five years to get 60% funded by ourselves and the local government's only putting in 40%. So I wanna dial in on marketing. Oh, everyone's always asking, what are you spending on marketing? So Gila Valley Tourism gets about 2,000 a month or 24,000 a year. Buy local is $12,000 a month. Um, we have some editing software, a website, uh, regional tourism partnerships with a few entities. And then this booth equipment line, um, we're gonna buy uh, under this plan, City of Safford branded booth equipment to have at the League of Cities and Towns conference so that when you're out meeting all those other municipalities, they can, there can be a nice booth that the other municipalities can come see 
and we'll have that set up for you and get some swag and different things so that you can be well represented at that conference. I think your <clears throat> buy local um, uh, campaign that you run is very crucial in, and we even heard it earlier today that our sales tax revenue has climbed, right? We all heard that, right? And I don't think it's just happenstance. I think that does a lot in by the campaign and how much the the uh, you guys put into it and then it gets matched by other radio entities and and really boosts that up. So once again, that's a it's a, a excellent uh, spend of, of funds to keep the sales tax generation route rolling in in your city. Yeah, thank you. And we're lucky that our local media are matching um, those funds that we spend to help out with that. And when we, we help out with those commercials that are talking about, you know, buy your car locally or come from out of town and buy your car here, almost like a tourism spot to buy your car here. And even mouth, you know, word of mouth when we're talking to folks about where'd you get your car? And if it's not local, we'll shame them. So that's good. <laughs> So the three principles we run by in our action plan are connection, leadership, and tourism. So our connection piece is our memberships. We love to build relationships between people at the chamber. We have a monthly soiree. It's the first Thursday of every month at 5 o'clock. And we like to get business members in the same room because we think when people make friends, they make money too. And we have a business center at the chamber. You can use our big room for a bigger meeting. Any chamber member can. Any chamber member from the... The smallest membership to the largest membership can use our boardroom. Um, we like to see business members creating partnerships. If you go down to Rustic Barn Bakery, you're going to see a bunch of home-based businesses selling their stuff right there at Lori's place because they've created friendships and consignment and those kind of things to make that work. We like to help our members, especially the new ones, figure out their marketing. How are they going to get the word out? So we teach them how to write press releases and distribute them for them. We have a highway marquee. Where 14,000 cars pass every day, and Todd Haney said he should say 28,000 eyes because that's more, that's a bigger number. <laughs> we still use 14,000 cars though. Um, we do grand openings and ribbon cuttings. We just had one this, two this last week. We are doing website landing pages for all of our members. We send an email update out to the members, and every week we go on Voice of the Valley, that's KATO uh, with David Bell on Tuesdays. The chamber sponsors that day. So, one thing that our business members are always asking is how they can give back. And we're always looking for opportunities for these business owners to serve on boards, to donate funds, to participate on, on uh, different committees. And the community development director asked, who should we put on this business, this business support board? And we, we were happy to reach out to Kim Gifford and to Chris Coronado and, and kind of marry those two together. Those are the kind of things we can do. And those are the kind of things our business members are eager to do, is to, is to connect with this community. So our, another program we have is Gila Valley Leadership. It's an annual induction program from September to May. We send a group of about 20 people to Phoenix and to Washington to learn more about how our community works, how our community works locally, how it works in Phoenix, how it works in DC. And we've, we've had you know, a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a US Senator from this small small community. Uh, our membership program is for the alumni. We're working on ways for more ways, opportunities to connect and serve. I have a lot of nonprofit directors that come to me and say, I need board members. Who do you think would be good on this board? And then I'm able to say, I've got this bank of graduates that have gone through and thought about the community and learned about the utilities, learned about uh, police departments, learned about all kinds of things that make a community run that would, that would do well on your board. Um, some results from that program are business owners that have gotten new contracts with entities they never heard of because they did this program and made new relationships. Also new positions. There's a lot of folks <clears throat> in the past two cohorts that have gotten new, completely new jobs or uh, been promoted within their institution. The third pillar we've got is our tourism. And we believe over at the chamber that if our residents know what's going on, they're going to spread the word to their families. Uh, we have a we go up by a third in population during Thanksgiving weekend. That's a big time for families to come in, and that's a lot of our tourism is is folks bringing in their family. So we have a monthly adventure club where 
anyone can come and enjoy the tourism assets we have around the community. Our visitor center is open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We have visitors from all over the world go through those doors. Canada, Mexico, France, Australia, China, Croatia, and those are just the ones I've met. That's just from my own time working the, the visitor center. Uh, we have a program with Eastern Arizona Courier, or we, we sponsor a column every month called Middle of Somewhere, and that's where they do a deep dive into a tourism asset that we have in the community and tell a story about it and, and share it with people on how to participate. <clears throat> One of my favorite things that's happened since being at the chamber is having Kay Marcioni as our uh, tourism coordinator. She's from the Midwest and moved here and has learned more about this valley than a lot of residents. And she went very boldly over to the uh, Forest Service and said, hey, we need, a, we need a new map ground guide. We've got these one pagers that have been copied a million times. The maps are hard to read. Um, they're all over the place. And I mean, it's a federal agency, so it took them two years, but that's pretty fast for a federal agency. And they got a new Mount Graham guide out, which I'm really, it's really pretty, really nice new maps. We printed, we paid for the cost with your support uh, for 10,000 copies of that Mount Graham guide. And people from Tucson all over love that mountain and our locals too. We're also working with the new Southern Arizona Sports Film and Tourism Authority. Lee Patterson's on that board. I'm close to being on it. There's some shenanigans with the new governor and everything else that it's hard to get on any board right now. But I go to those meetings and that's gonna be a really good resource to this community in the future. It's a six county organization and it's heavy rural. And so rural has the winning vote on that group. So I was sitting with a potential new board, new member a couple weeks ago. And I was trying to sell him our biggest membership, which is a copper membership, $1,000 a month or $12,000 a year. And I told them, I'm going to be in 199 meetings in the next year. You know, 98 board and committee meetings, 52 Voice of the Valley appearances, 12 soirees, 12 adventure clubs, 10 full leadership days, 10 community network team meetings. That's the round table of nonprofits that meets um, on third Thursdays. Three large community events, that's Salsa Fest, Spring Festival, a trip to Phoenix, and a trip to DC. And I'm gonna, if you're a copper member, I'm gonna talk about you because you're investing in this community. And after I said that, this slide, they bought it. They, it was, that was good enough for them. They know we're out. They know that um, when we're in the room, people are listening to us. And so they, they bought that membership. So here are some deliverables we've had over the last year, a few years. Um, <clears throat> uh, six days a week at the visitor center. That's about 2,400 hours a year. City of Safford event programming, we clocked at 2,080 hours. That includes our events that we host in the City of Safford, that Salsa Fest and that Spring Festival. Um, we do Voice of the Valley every week. That's a $300 rally for our members. If you're a new business, it's $60 a year to be a member at the Chamber. And you can get on the radio the next week. You can give us $5 to start a monthly membership and get on the radio in the next week. It's really helpful to them. Um, middle of Somewhere is every month. That's about a $500 value. And then Gila Valley Adventure Club is about 912 hours a year to run that. We have the Gila Valley calendar on our website. If you go to gramchamber.org, click on the calendar, we have all the community calendars in one and the EAC calendar, and we're always adding events to that. We um, have redesigned and reissued the City of Safford Historic Walking Tour. And with your support, we're gonna be able to get a color printer that works and print out a whole bunch of those. Right now they're in black and white. Um, but we'll, we'll promise to make that really pretty. And then that Mount Graham guide that took two years of collaboration. And so I'm going to turn the time over to Karina, our president, to finish off this presentation. But one thing um, she's going to say is that we're asking for about a 15.7% raise. And so our question to you is going to be, if you've seen a 15% um, 15 us doing 50% better than four years ago, then you can vote for this plan. Events. I got to put my glasses on, I'm getting old the breaks. Hello, Mayor Couts and Council members. As Vance stated, my name is Karina Pino Reyes, and I'm the president of the Graham County Chamber of Commerce. I'd first like to thank you all for your support in the past. Um, without the support of the city of Safford, we would not be as successful today as we have been. So thank you so much. 
The City of Safford is an incredible partner. Your leadership is focused on supporting a high quality of life for this community and it is greatly appreciated. By supporting our agreement, you are helping us with the stability and, and foundation needed for a successful future. My vision as board president for the next five years is by retaining our dedicated and knowledgeable staff by offering employee benefits. So I've been on the chamber board for five years now. When I first started, it was not stable, if, if that's saying it nicely, in our staff. We are very lucky to have Mr. Bryce. Um, we are very lucky to have um, Brittany. Sorry, I was thinking Kay when I saw you. Uh, Kay and Brooke. I think it is. it takes a special person to work at the chamber, and being able to retain that group of people is essential to our success in the future. So not only giving them the pay that they deserve, but also offering them benefits that none of them have. So that's very important to me as a, as a board president um, to make sure that they can get those benefits today and in the future. So you can see here from the dedicated chamber team, you're not only getting the hours that they're banking for us. These four individuals are invested in our community and you can see the different things that they're part of. Uh, City Special Events Committee, Safford Downtown Association, two of them are Rotary members, Graham County Fair Chair, um, Boys and Girls Club Vice President, Search and Rescue Volunteer, Freeport Community Investment Committee, and then hours and hours of volunteer work. So again, not only do they give us the support that we need at the Chamber, they're invested in the community and I think it's important to retain those employees for our Chamber and for our directive. One thing that I'd also like to see over the next five years is, is to increase our membership uh, with a strong focus on local connections and creating a strong community hub. Um, join SBDC, uh, Commerce Authority, and SEGO collaboration for classes, seminars, and local advocacy. This ties into our buy local campaigns. I think buying local is fantastic. Um, I am a big proponent of making sure that we're supporting our local businesses, but also giving them the tools that they need to continue their business, to build their business, to grow their business. So that's one thing that I'd like to see over the next five years. Uh, increase utilization and awareness of the ent entertainment district in downtown Safford. Um, I believe the entertainment district is a very, right now, untapped um, benefit for the city of Safford. So if we can start helping you guys build that, it's not only gonna help us from our membership standpoint, but the city of Safford. I'd also like to partner with the Gila Valley Economic Development Organization to promote the city of Safford, both regionally and statewide. Again, that comes back to our staff members being involved, both regionally and statewide, um, and making sure that the city of Safford is in those conversations and people are aware of how great this community is. I'd like to create a gathering place for both local collaboration and tourism information. Big emphasis on building remodel. Um, we are very grateful for the support you guys give us and the building. Uh, the roof being replaced is fantastic. Now we'd like to make the inside look just as great. We'd like to have community meetings. We'd like to, people to be able to come in and hold different seminars and webinars. So getting that building remodeled, I think is gonna be a great step forward for us in the next five years. Uh, website development for buy local tourism and an information hub. Everything is going digital. If you look at the world now and you, nobody picks up a phone book anymore, you pick up your phone and you Google it. So being able to have a website that's got the right, the right optimization is very important, and especially over the next five years. It's very important to me. Uh, we'd like to continue being a positive advocate for the community, our partners, and members. So just to summarize what Vance has gone through, this is the innovative contract that we've come up with. Um, it is going to increase the city's annual investment by a little over 24,000, or a 15.6% increase. 180,000 in 2024 versus 155 in 2022. Um, gives chamber staff stability, benefits, and an opportunity to plan for grants. Again, matching funds anywhere we can find it, making sure that we have the staff available to build our membership needed. Um, the staff meal vouchers and member benefits to all city employees. Uh, crucial support for city events and programming. And then I'd like to touch again on this 10,000 city sponsorship fund. Um, our intention with that is to allow council to direct us on where they would like those funds allocated. So if there comes up a, a special um, 
group or program that you guys would like to support, you could then come to us and say, we would like you guys to support this. In the past, we've done that for, for the balloon festival, but we just wanted to make sure that that was written into the contract as well. Okay, and with that, I'd like to open it up if you guys have any questions. Vince, remind me, how, how long ago did you take over? Um, April 2019. So about almost exactly four years. Yeah. yeah. So you came in a year into the current contract. Yes. Yes. One way to look at it for me is, is uh, okay, what are, what 15% increase are we going to get for this coming five years? But you've already so much, uh, it's way more than 15% that you outperformed the last one. Uh, from from my perspective, so that that's the way I'm gonna I'm gonna go into it. Plus, I have no doubt that we'll get a 15% increase in output on top of that. Thank because you. Of, because of the leadership that we currently have on the on the chamber, so um, I would really would like to see, uh, and I think we're gonna talk more about it with the entertainment district. That's a big one for me. Is the 15% over the five years? Does that answer your question, Mayor? I just think they should have asked for, <laughs> I think they should have asked for more. That's negotiation. As a sales representative, that comment kind of got me in the heart a little bit. <laughs> Listen, uh, we sign contracts every day where everybody is coming back and they, they add interest. Um, the city's talking about increasing their own salary benefits and they're putting in cola they're putting in longevity they're putting in all that as well and you guys are stuck at a five-year solid contract we just renewed a contract with you maybe a, a year ago uh, which or the first of the year over the uh, uh, contracted out on our attorneys and they went up you know so again yeah you guys went up um, but at the same time I think you could have asked for um, I think you could you should have asked for a little bit but I think you always should have that for negotiating and, and go with that, especially when you re are recognized as a strong leader in the community right now. I mean, the chamber went <clears throat> from <clears throat> a lower spot to where now they're they're elevated more. They took ownership of the salt effect and are running with it. I mean, com compared to, you know, and you guys have taken ownership in it. And when somebody takes ownership in something like that, we need to be supportive of that as well. So... Once again, I echo 100% of what Councilman Hempel said. Hats off to you guys. And, you know, I'm sure I, I think you guys have earned your benefits. I think you guys have earned. I mean, that's a good way to also keep your employees, just like John's been out asking us to try to maintain employees by changing some of the stuff here. So for him not to negotiate with you guys a little bit more, I think he should have tried. <laughs> so did that answer your question, Arnold? <laughs> Session. So, guys, if you want to make any changes, the reason we brought it is so that you have an opportunity to make changes if you'd like. Okay. I'd just like to ask a couple questions. Um, one, and I don't expect you to have an answer to this, but how many City of Safford residents are in your leadership program actually live in the City of Safford? I have to run down it in my head real quick, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> out of out of how many? Sixteen. You mean this year? Right. This now, cohort? the current one. Danielle's in it right now. <laughs> You're not a resident. That's right. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> um I'd have to run through it and well, I can get you the answer. I'll oh, you email might. you. I mean, I just like to see that number come up. Because okay. I, I don't think we have very many of our residents who we could put on our boards and commissions in there. So that's not benefiting us straight away. Okay. Um, also, is there a provision in this, heaven forbid, say we have a recession and and there's, let's say somebody, somebody buys Freeport and shuts it down. I know that's a little bit off topic, but are we are we taking a big bite of this by ourselves? It appears 
Um, I guess my third question is, where are the other government agencies? Um, I mean, you know, it seems like this keeps happening. We we have to do an airport, and we have to do a golf course, and we have to do a library, and there's no. It's just how it is, but well, I'll, I'll jump in on that because I've, I've thought I've kind of battled that myself, and and kind of it's one of the work session, and you can answer as well, Vance, but. Um, I just keep coming back to, I don't care what Thatcher or Pima do in, I do, and I hope they contribute more, um, but we need to do what we think is best for our community and, and, and our relationship with the council. Um, I'm not going to wait around for Thatcher or Pima. To, my, my question was leading to, are, are you the Safford Chamber of Commerce? And are you not working for those other entities? I mean, we're yeah, we're, we're building our relationships over there. Uh, we do do the salsa fest and the spring festival in Safford, so there's benefits that the city has that um, Thatcher and Pima haven't haven't talked about. We're we're showing them what community events can do. I think a lot of times over in Thatcher, the college has so many events going on, and church and other things that adding events to the lives of really busy people on council doesn't seem like the most positive thing. So we're starting to show them, you know, that there's areas of their residents that could benefit from some of the, these events. And Heath over there has a few ideas, but we're, we're continually building those relationships. And that's one reason why I, like, as far as negotiating for even more, I, I think the negotiation needs to happen in other places and we need to go to those other pots, go to those other municipalities and the state even. And, uh, I've got two cousins on Thatcher Council. You think I could do better, but <laughs> we're we're working on those relationships and and trying to see what that what events they want. They haven't. They're kind of new to to being involved. And I go to their I go to their city council meeting, their town council meetings, both towns, and we're involved. And we'll be doing a ribbon cutting over in Pima for their new council room, and and. We just need to get into a contract negotiation mode with them. And I think this this five years, getting into this five years with you will let me go over there and 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 show them what's going on over here, show them the contract, show them our programs, and be able to ask for for much more from over there. I hope that's where you were headed. Um and I I don't want you to think that I'm anti what you're doing. I just feel like we can't can't do it by ourselves and appreciate what has happened. I can see that, I mean, all the events are bigger than ever. And, and I appreciate that. I also see though, that we're spending more and more staff time to make them happen more and more, you know, skipping this fee and skipping that fee. And there's no, there's no way to know if, if we're even, if we're even making a nickel at the end of the year. Um, and I, so I just feel like I need to ask the question. Yeah, of course. And some of the reason we have events aren't just to have fun and go out for a nice weekend. That's a good benefit, but forcing the, not forcing, asking the private industries to come in and work together and to be on these committees together and to learn about the city creates, those relationships create opportunities for them to grow their business, for them to understand government and not just rail against it all the time, but to sit in and, and hear what's going on. And so I guess the secret agenda with events is to get people together, get people next to each other and figure those things out. And we did, we did change how we do the events. Two business members showed me their books and said, we, if you block our street off on Friday all day, we lose money. And so we have, we, I, this last weekend, we just restricted it to one block and we packed it full and it was a good model. It, it felt good. And I'm going to go talk to those two businesses and see if there was a bunch of people parked in front of them and still hurting them, but we'll see what's going on there. And um, we're always adjusting, always trying to make it work. I want to offer one more encouragement. Mm -hmm. um, this weekend during, during your event, there was also heritage days in Pima and both times I went by there, there was nobody there. And I just want to encourage you to 
don't stack your events so that yeah. it hurts somebody else's, even if it's for our benefit. Yeah. You know, and one thing I'd like to mention, I, I do hope you can, you know, you'll keep approaching, you know, Thatcher and the others to help, you know, find, help fund this because whatever, everything that we're doing and everything that's happening here, it definitely is helping their businesses and they should be part of it, you know, because it, it helps the whole communities, all of us. And I hope you keep after them. I, will. I, I hate explaining the whole bill. Right, and, and just to be clear, I don't disagree with that at all. Um, I just think, it, I just, for me, it won't be a reason to to right. not act uh, based on on their inaction or their view. Um, and if they did get to a point where they wanted to do their own events, I would hope that the communication too would be uh, that they're going to have to adjust their right. their contribution probably going forward if they want to get more involved in that way. Matt, I got a, a question. I was approached, how many of our vendors are participating in the events that are on Main Street that are taking business away from the actual business in the area here? We've got a diverse set. So we even have small, we have uh, Main Street businesses that have their own booth that come down which is cool. And then we have some from out of town. We have, you know, some from Wilcox. We consider them as a chamber, more regional approach, we consider them pretty local as well. Um, and they all should be, and we need, we all have, they all have a Safford City Business License. We require that. We run it through um, B's office and make sure that that's the case. And uh, they all, because they have that license, they should have their TPT set up and paying local taxes while they're here in town. Um, so while they're here that weekend, they're local. Are they taking business away that week? Or are people walking up and down the street and doing some shopping? Maybe we need to figure out how to measure that. I, I, but, think, I think that needs to be really looked at because I think we have some businesses that are being affected by this and it needs to be reevaluated that we don't take business away from our local business where our people should be buying and all that. Thank you. We'll look into it. Anybody else? That's I think you guys are doing tremendous work. I love seeing that grass filled with tents and events. You could never have too many for me, but that's just me. But I would like to get a park done so we can move them off that event and get them somewhere else and wake up dead people. I appreciate it. And the grass looks better than it ever has. Yeah. Who's doing that? But it looked great this weekend. Thank you. So, Mayor, as a result, is there anything? That I should I would like to change it, but they're happy with their five year contract and I don't think you heard anybody argue about a five year contract. If it was me I'd have asked Mr. more, but Mr. Mayor, this is Bill Sims. Yes. I look at these agreements with cities and towns all over the state. Um, and in fact in twenty eighteen, a legislator filed a complaint against Sedona arguing that the as under fourteen eighty seven, that's the statute that lets it requires the AG to render an opinion and risks losing state shared revenue. And Sedona and its Chamber of Commerce fought back vigorously and won. Uh, the, 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 these arrangements are important. I must admit, however, some chambers aren't as, as, as professional as yours. As I look at this agreement, it is far more detailed than I've seen in most. Most chambers just expect to have their hand out and get paid cash. I think this is an excellent agreement. I do recommend one thing. On page 274 of 302, it's in section, I'm sorry, uh, 278 of 302 on section eight, there's a reporting requirement. I truly think you as counsel should, should through your manager, request that the chamber give you reports showing the benefit that they're providing your community. Bottom line is I've never seen a better agreement. Uh, uh, it's important to validate this concept. <coughs> The AG tried to turn it on its head and Sedona won. And so I, I think this is a good agreement and I recommend it wholeheartedly. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna make those changes that you're recommending and 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 we want to uh, I mean you guys will uh, approve it as well, hopefully, and then we'll get those changes in and we'll get this signed. They're in there already. They're in the changes he just they're they're in there, Mayor. They're, yeah, all, they're all I'm saying is we, you already the, have it there in paragraph eight. Take advantage of it. Oh, okay. All right. Perfect. Yeah, we, we sat chamber. down with them. The whole point was to say, look, as we detail the deliverables, let's 
bring that information to council during the year so you can yes. hear what has occurred. Yes. Okay, and the perfect. Cha and the chamber, uh, they report to you what every quarter? Every quarter? Yeah, that, that's also in here. So there's I, a quarterly report, yeah. plus we can request financials if we want, and they turn those around. And then the other part of it that I asked for on the reporting is simply that the chamber come in as we go into the first part of the next year and say, here's what we've accomplished during the first half of the year, which then kind of leads us into the budget cycle. So if there are any needs, like with, you know, we've been discussing um, issues, we had capital issues come up, for example. So we tried to emphasize in here that there's a, an avenue now where if the chamber has a need, if they're going to do a remodel, if there's a need that's a capital need, that really isn't being taken into account in their budget. So now there's an opportunity for them to say, hey, we need to make this capital arrangement with the city, but it's not part of our ongoing cost. So that would be an additional CIP project, just like the roof. So again, there's this opportunity for them to come in dialogue with the council more readily and see, let us know what they've done, but also let us know if they have needs that we can we can meet for them. Perfect. Good job, Vance. But kind of visit with those other places a little bit more. <laughs> we'll do, promise. Thank you. We're gonna go ahead and close our work session and reconvene into executive session. But before we go into executive session, I have to ask, what are we going into executive session for? Are oh, yeah. we talking about an individual? Are we talking about something? I Because I don't know why it's even needed. Uh, we're doing two. Okay, so, shoot them. Tell me what. So, tell me why. Uh, the first one is for clerk, because um, we want to discuss some personnel issues in the clerk's office. And then the second one has to do with the, uh, the uh, ordinance that we've been trying to discuss and pass. We're getting some legal counsel so issues. that's the, that's ordinance because you go to, you got it written down here grievance and appeals process but you're actually asking for that one to be talking about the, the the police chief or the city official appointments is that what you're asking for right and so when we brought the original ordinance one of the issues that got raised was the grievance and appeals process so i've asked that the attorney discuss those two processes as they relate back to the ordinance so that the council will better understand how they relate and whatever. And why would that have to go into each session? We're getting legal advice on it. I, I don't. I just don't. Want to. Mr. Mayor, you it's, go ahead. I want to hear why I'm going to each session it, it, for this. No, it's your call. I mean, you're the client. If you want to do this in public, uh, uh, if, there was a proposal. There's been a proposal on the agenda for weeks now regarding changes to the reporting and, and and hiring and firing of department heads right i'm told someone raised the issue of the grievance procedure and the appeal procedure neither of I, I neither of which i think are implicated by this ordinance and so if someone you're caught on your council would like to discuss with me in private how those apply i'm happy to or if you want to do it in public i'll do it in public Okay, I, I would be okay with listening to the discussion of the city clerk's office personnel matters if there's something that's talking about an individual that needs to go. But it's your, you, you're the ones who get the call. I don't. Uh, if you want I, to don't go listen, into this, we could do it in public. But I think, I think on the personnel item, it does need to be in I agree. So the personnel item is the discussion of the clerk's office personal matters. I think the discussion of the grievance and appeal process, I want to hear an open form. I'm not hearing anything. If you're... I want to hear that in open form. The last one, 16 okay, 2, I want to hear in open form. Hello. I don't think we need to go into e session for that. Do we need, and John, do we need a motion to go into executive session? We do. Okay, I move we go into executive session. <coughs> Second. I have discussion on executive session. I only want to go in on executive session under one item, and that is the discussion of the clerk's office of personnel matters. And I want to wait and hear from my attorney if I, as the mayor, get to make that decision. Mayor, I want to make a motion that we just go into executive session for discussing the clerks. Um, we already, have, oh, we have, a already have a motion. So the mayor is trying to, to discuss the issue with you. Can you go So ahead? I, I, I want to know, I have a motion on the floor to go into executive session, but I want to hear from my attorney if I have the right as the mayor to yank item 16-2, which is the discussion of the grievance and appeal process, off of that, and we only go in for office personnel matters because overall there's no reason to go into executive session over a grievance and appeals process. That should be done in open form. That's that simple. 
You can do whatever you want. I mean, I don't know if you heard me. I, I, I understand this has been on the agenda for weeks now. And I've been sick Someone, for weeks now. So we're here now, but we're going to handle this. Okay, there was a motion and a second to go into executive session for the two items, okay? And I wanted and, to hear and, from our attorney. Have, He's, he hasn't mentioned point. anything he yet. Just told you. He just told nope. you. He said, I have the right to not go into it if I want so, to. So, Bill, right now there's a motion and a second to go into E session for both items that's on the table right now. So, if, if a majority of council wants to go into E session, you can. However, if you're trying to find a compromise, I do, I do think you have to go into E session on the personnel matter. Yeah. It's up to the council if they want to go into E session on the other matter. Right. And what I'm telling you right now is that there's a motion to go into E session for both items and a second. Is there a way, if we would like to go in a different direction, it's up to the council? Um, to keep, yeah, why don't we take a vote? Vote on the motion? Yeah, well, then we'll move. Yeah, I, we're up here. I, I was trying to find a way to avoid having the motion defeated. One option would be because I'm, I'm hearing that some want to go in at least for the person is to, is to amend the motion to say, I, I move the motion to be amended to, uh, to only apply to uh, the personnel item. And then if that passes, then the vote would be only on the personnel item, not on the uh, not on the code item. I make that. But it's, 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 it's the council's call. It's not and my And that call. makes more sense call. that we should be we should be individualizing these because even our city attorney says that realistically the grievance process and the appeals process don't need to be in e session, but a personnel matter does. So that's Mayor, what I, no, no, Mayor, Mayor. What I said was okay. If, say. If, 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 it's more on your council on legal advice as to the implications of the grievance and appeal process with the ordinance they have the right but if four only want to do that if four don't we stay in the open okay all right so we have a motion and a second to go into executive session to discuss items 16 1 and 2. all those in favor aye all those opposed and a no vote is a yes vote. So we're not going into E session for those two. I make a motion that we go into executive session to discuss. Wait, wait, he's got something. I thought somebody was going to amend that to say what we really want. Well, we got to vote that one first before we can amend. No, you can amend and then vote the motion. You have to do no, it that no, way. Nobody amended. Well, Michael tried and you got to shut him down. Well, because they said that we couldn't. So I make a motion that we go into executive session to discuss the city clerk's office personnel matters only. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Three. So we pass. So we get to go into each session. Thanks.
All right, I'm going to go ahead and, and close executive session and reconvene into our regular meeting to bring up item 16 to the discussion of grievance and appeals process. John, that'll be you. Okay, Mayor, members of council, um, we, we have uh, been over this ordinance a number of times, and so I don't want to belabor the point. Essentially, the reason that the item was brought in the first place is because an issue was raised by a council member that said that there were some difficulties created by essentially splitting the reporting process of a department head. And in the process of going over that issue, it made perfect sense to me to say if it applied to that department head, it applied to all department heads. And so that is essentially what is in Ordinance 23-006. Uh, we had a work session on it. Uh, we, we got direction from council. That direction manifests itself in the ordinance as it is written in this document. Um, I guess there's been some changes in, of, of opinions uh, over time. So I'm not going to get into all the details again. I think at this point I will turn it over to council and allow you to discuss as necessary. <clears throat> So are we going to be, we're going, we're going over ordinance 23006? Correct. So the question that I have, John, is I have to ask why? Why now? Why, 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 was, why is this needed now? Well, as I indicated earlier, the issue came up that there were some difficulties with the reporting from a particular department head. Now, as we discussed and as we, we brought to you in the work session, this is a council manager form of government. In a council manager form of government, generally speaking, the manager is given the authority to run the organization, which includes the hiring, firing, and management of his department heads, his or her department heads. We did a survey with the league. The league survey came back and basically said that, you know, the process that we're using, which is essentially a hybrid process where I bring a nomination to council that approves it, is only used by 10% of the organizations in this form of government. There are probably strong reasons for that, and those reasons were voiced, which really brought us to this point in the first place, which is that a big part of personnel management involves the hiring, the management, and the possible termination of employees. All of those aspects of managing those persons are important. Uh, and so again, in the council manager form of government, it's assumed that the manager will manage is department heads. So when the issue was uh, brought up by a council member regarding a single department head, I brought back all of them because if it applied to one, then it logically would apply to all. It really was that simple. Okay, so, and then when you did that, you then at one of those work sessions, you asked to go ahead and remove the fire department and leave it as is. Correct. And you gave me a reason because they are, a, volunteer fire department that gets paid and they vote themselves chief or not chief and then it's accepted by the council correct and uh, so we've had this policy for years and it's worked it's had a few issues but when we found the issues we're addressing the issues we've had the same issues within the departments that that you have found that different individuals have found within within their departments they've been addressed and the only thing that changed is we came and we changed the policy we didn't change their name we didn't change their title we didn't change who they reported to we just changed their policy and made sure they knew what they needed to follow to get to the right um, area correct that's what we did um, so we, we've had that so I think everything that you've when I read through this I look through it and I, I, I see a whole lot of nonsense that I felt that the city uh, council shouldn't be involved in anyway. I think the city council needs to be involved in two things. The city council needs to be, well, it needs to be involved in, in pertaining these, these items. The city council needs to be involved in the fire department. The city council needs to be involved in the police chief. And that is to leave it in place as it's written. And don't be. And the reason for that, I've, I've heard, I've heard us go back and forth before, where ones say, "Well, if he fired the fire, if he fired the police chief because of something, 
Well, then you can fire the manager. Absolutely, you can. You can fire the manager, but you also got to give him a six month pension as well. So you got to pay him out to get him out of the situation. And we still, we felt good enough to fire the, the manager for that issue. And you still are stuck without now a manager and you're stuck without a police chief. And you can't hire a police chief until you bring in a new manager under this writing of the way you have it. And so it's like, it's not reinventing the wheel. It's saying it works. The, the voice of the people are, 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 are elected officials. The chief of police sometimes, and I've seen this with my own time while I've not been on here, criminal investigations have to happen, correct? Sometimes uh, uh, money gets transferred wrong or whatever, and there, there needs to be an investigation. Well, when a city manager is over the chief of police, that's going to be very difficult to handle. Sometimes a city uh, council member might get a DUI. That needs to be handled as well. And so I think take everything that you've written on here, give you 100% duties to those, except for my fire chief and except for my police chief. And I think on that, I think we, we leave that in place, but I would say that maybe it's a two thirds vote to, to, to fire the, the chief of police. I think that's majority vote anyway is a two thirds, correct? Yeah, and I okay. and, and if I can just make two points. Go ahead, make your two points. And um, I'll so in the case of the fire department, the reason that I didn't include them was because the, the purpose behind this process that we're bringing to you is that there's a professional component to the hiring process for all of the department heads, except for the fire chief. Fire chief is selected by volunteers. So my my assessment of this was predicated on the fact that I was providing a professional assessment of the candidates as part of a hiring process, where in the case of the fire chief, I was not. And therefore, I, I did bring them and make them separate, but we had already done that once before. So the fire chief issue had been laid to rest months before. And the reason I didn't bring it back in is because I'm not doing an interview process. I'm not interviewing the fire chief. He's being selected by volunteers. When it comes to situations where there could be some type of conflict, whether the manager gets a DUI and the police chief, then you know you, the manager turns around and fires the police chief. There's all any number of scenarios that would go uh, that we could come up with where that would create a, a problem. Um, obviously, 90 something percent of the communities don't do that. They don't have that hybrid system and they seem to function just fine. There are other options for council besides firing the uh, city manager, if there was an intervention required, you could contact legal counsel. Legal counsel could intervene in that process and assess, you know, what, what had taken place. So you don't always necessarily have to fire the city manager. Uh, so again, the idea of this system being put in place in the way it was written is, this is pretty much how council manager forms of government function all across the state and across the country. And they all seem to do just fine. There's no meltdowns or breakdowns. There are systems in place. And again, the reason that uh, Bill is here, and I, are you still here, Bill? Yes. Oh, miracle. So um, so the reason Bill is here, because he can address some of those issues that you have, which is part of the reason that I wanted to do an executive session, but clearly it, it didn't need to be that way, and that's fine. He can address them now and address some of these concerns that you might have if there's some type of internal conflict. But again, this process is tried and true. It's used in all kinds of municipalities across the state and across the country. And, and John, <clears throat> all due respect, I do understand what you're saying, but I, I really, how can I say this respectfully without just saying it and you know me, I have to question the survey that was done on the 10 percent that you keep referring to um you know i i've talked to lots of cities and towns and and you know what i'm just going to say i don't care what other cities and towns are doing i care what safford arizona is doing right i care about my city i care about my chief of police and it's very important to me that my chief of police reside and live in the city in which his residents are paying their salary. And therefore, 
I think it's a strong voice that this council unites and says, absolutely, we do believe the fire chief and the police chief should be under the hiring, meaning the manager goes out and finds the candidate. And I mean, according to the way it's written, the, the manager hires them with the approval, just basically, hmm, almost got caught. <laughs> just like what, just like uh, uh, the hiring and firing, or the hiring of a city clerk, we 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 uh, um, we talk about that, and so that was uh, before all of this gotten written up and stuff. So I really, really think that that uh, the the authority as that needs to be you pick out your client, you bring it to us, and we vote on it. And once again, you have every right to fire the police chief, every right. And he has every right to the, the grievance process, which I think, I thought maybe that was going to be not, revealed. Not for firing. Okay. But for firing, no. it says on here that you can fire them, but the council would have to be in agreement with it. Right. Correct? So you would have to bring it to the council right. and say, hey, we really think Chief Glenn Ords just needs to be fired. And I promise you, if he did something wrong, I think I would hope that the integrity of my police department, that they would step down anyway, without going and, and through again, the process. Why would, I, why would I bring it to you lightly? If that was going to be the case, and what are you going to assess? You're going to assess the documentation that I create, okay. generally over a period of time, okay. um, that is going to be what you look at in a moment in time. I may have spent three years with that individual, and in one night, you're going to read the body of information that I compiled on that individual that says this person is subject to termination, which I probably would have vetted with the attorneys as well. And in one night, we're going to decide what? No, based on what? And, and that, that's I've, I've gone around and around with this myself, uh, personally, just hours thinking about it. Myself. And I keep coming back to that point. And it's with the hiring, too. The process we have now is is going to be a committee from the community with with pillars um they're going to go through candidates and vets and somebody going through that process and that name being brought to us i can't imagine the scenario where i'd say no to that exactly and the reverse if i'm not supervising that employee or evaluating that employee in this case the police chief will just and we'll just make it that employee um, anybody bringing that position to be terminated is going to have the documentation and the evidence and all um, to have arrived at that point and I would be at the mercy of that information I wouldn't have uh, enough independent information to make decisions otherwise unless we're going to supervise and evaluate and and councilman Hippel your 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 point exact but you also can't talk to the police chief you have the right to talk to him and, and right. find out him on your own as a council sure. member and hear his side and do your due diligence there because just possibly the manager and the police chief are butting heads. Right. And, and, and so, but according to this, I understand this, that it says that um, that we were supposed to be kind of evaluating this police chief and it just never really happened, well, we are. right? Huh? I, I, we aren't as far as I know. And is that what I, is that how I read it, John? No, no. So you do the mat. You do the police chief. Yeah, and how would you? Huh? How would you evaluate well, him? You don't. But that's again. Time. It's an ordinance. As simple right. as writing an ordinance. Simple as the process that we went through to get you an evaluation. So you want to correct? You want to now evaluate the department heads as well? I didn't. Did I say department heads? I'm talking about two specific but items: the fire chief and the police chief. But they're department heads. I, I I'm not fighting for them. How would we evaluate the? I'm fighting for two it? positions on this. I understand place. that they're both department heads. Exactly, well, so. they are department heads. Okay. But well, I think we're saying the same thing. You think we're saying the same thing? I think so. Then, then why do you? Why then? My question is, why do you want the police chief under you? My whole approach to this is one thing and one. You're the only there. one out of all the managers that wants this now. And again. It's, it's up to the council. What I'm saying to you is everything that we've done up to this point, whether it be compensation, city code, airport, has been the same approach. The approach has been comprehensive. You go 30,000 feet, you look at the issue, and you come up with the best professional answer to solve the problem that's in front of you. 
this issue is the same issue. You think I wanted to bring this? Do you think I didn't think it would ruffle some feathers? But this is my job. And I look at this and I say, the document that is in front of you provides this city with the best way to manage your department heads. And let me tell you, there has been fallout from not following that process. There has been things where I'm still struggling to right the ship because we've gone in other directions on this issue. If the department heads work for the manager, they have loyalty to one person. And hopefully that loyalty and the fact that they are assigned to that manager will alter their behavior before they ever need to be terminated. But if they feel that they can have two masters and if one says no and they want to find yes from the other one, that's where the real issues get created. So for me, this ordinance and the way it is written, it provides this city with the best possible way to manage day-to-day -day operations for the city of Safford. Right. That's my position. Okay. Go ahead. I think that the city manager, it's his job to manage. That's why we hired him. The council's job is to give direction to run the city. That's it. His job. He, I'm not going to be out here supervising any of these people. You know, and telling them what to do or how to do it. Report to me. That's not my business. That's my business right there. I strongly have to disagree with you. But That's fine. Go ahead. There, Can I say two, um, Go ahead. Okay. So my 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 <coughs> son is. I want to. I want to stay the way it is. Okay. Um, we were the way we the way you were presenting now. We were that way at one time. Correct. I, I'm assuming. I don't know. I don't. It's yeah. always been this way since. I've been. So, well, yeah. Since you've been here, yeah. but back in I don't know when it was, but a chief got appointed by the city manager without the council's approval or something like that. And now this, all of a sudden this came forward because the city manager made a decision that was not um, following procedure, I guess, the policy. And so this was just changed, I don't know, um, probably when Chief Or got put in, I think it was. I believe it was prior to that. Oh, yeah, um, well, Chief, Chief Brugman, that's what it was. And so we have to have the input of, you do your job. That's what your job is, okay? But if we have any questions, I want to be able to have, hey, you know, you know kind of run it by you. Like if we give you all the authority, then you can just pretty much do what you want and we just sit back and say, well. Well, no. Uh, Mayor, Council, Council, no, there's always checks and balances, and you never give up your authority completely. Um, if there was anything that was untoward or didn't go, uh, the council could always go to the attorney and, and seek an investigation. And again, Bill can speak to that more. So you're you're simply providing the authority to the manager to run the operation. It doesn't mean you've now completely unplugged and have no input. Um, the problem comes in, again, as I've stated before, is that when you split that loyalty in that way, I, I mean, what would the scenario be? So I bring a, a police chief up and there's been a history of, of and again, I, I hate to use a specific example, but that's the one that got the ball rolling. Uh, and so what, you look at all the data that's been compiled, you go through the entire grievance process that's in our policies, and you determine which I would go through legal counsel before ever coming here and say, is this a legal, legally defensible act? At which point, if I got the answer in the affirmative, I would bring it. And that would be the standard that I would use, right? If, if I assess that individual in a professional legal manner, right? Not just off the cuff. And if something was not done well or untoward, legal counsel would catch it. You could still have that conversation. It doesn't exclude you from having the conversation but it doesn't include you in the hiring and termination process unless something were to go awry. And again, Bill, you can speak to this if you want to at some point. Mayor, Mayor members, the policy decision that you have to make, it's not John's decision, it's not my decision, it's your decision, is do you wish to align supervision with hiring and evaluation with hiring and firing? Currently, you do have the fire chief separate differently because that, that's a unique position because he's a volunteer. The fire, the, the, the fire chief, now for the you have to decide what you want. And if a majority of you want to keep 
uh, you, your ability as a council to, to uh, approve hiring and approve firing. You've now divorced hiring and firing from evaluation, and it does result in an employee possibly having two masters. But that, that's your call. It's not John's call, and it's not my call. And the majority, and the majority of towns and cities do align supervision, evaluation with hiring and firing, but you haven't. And if you want to maintain that status quo, you have every right to maintain the status quo. Councilman I, uh, I'm definitely sensitive to the, the possibility of the examples that, that have been brought up. But uh, for me, there's, there's also the possibility of the, the reverse, highly unlikely uh, that we would have a, a police chief that's, that maybe needs to go. Uh, but is cozy enough with the council that um, they won't fire him. And then we have a city manager that, that sees what needs to be done and his, his hands are tied. That's highly unlikely, but it's probably just as possible as a city manager being investigated by a police chief and then firing him. Both of those are improbable. So it puts me back to what's the best way to run an organization, and, and I always go back to my profession. Do I trust Tad Jacobson to hire and fire his teachers, or do I trust the Safford School Board to uh, have all those employees run through them? Um, I trust Tad. I, I, I have an inherent mistrust in this side of the dais that I'm on. Um, so I, that's what I that's what I keep coming back to is what's the best way to run the organization, uh, and if we're not going to evaluate and supervise, um, then that's the best way to do it. <clears throat> Anybody else have any discussion on this? Okay. Good. So you're saying about two masters. So if you're supervising him, why? Why do we have input on what he does and doesn't do? Like, why? How can we overwrite you through informal channels, basically? Okay. So if we keep it the way it is, I mean, we're not saying that he's where his supervisor. That's right. No, right? it has implications for my ability to alter their behavior. And if I decide that I want to, let's so let's say I want to fire. There's a department head that I've got three years of, of bad experience with, and I say that person should be terminated because they're not fulfilling the obligations of their job. And I bring that to the council, and the council says, I'm sorry, we want to keep them. Where does that leave me in terms of my ability to run my shop? See, that's my point exactly. Is If you have a problem with somebody, let's just say you do, and you want to get rid of them, but then we have seven different people here that have different opinions of that one person. And I mean, I, I don't want to leave it on just on one person. Like if you, if someone has a bad feeling towards somebody and just wants to get rid of them and we sit back and be like, you know, I don't want that to be, I want it to be where there's seven heads that are thinking more than just one. Yeah, my response to that, Councilman Arbiza would be, just the fact that we'd have a city manager that would bring us a police chief to be terminated because he has a bad feeling about him is not generally what's going to happen. Again, it's going to be evaluations, improvement plans. It's going to be a process. Uh, and again, if we had a city manager uh, trying to terminate a police chief because they or don't get department. along or any department head, uh, yeah, it might be a messy process, Mayor, but we're going to get rid of the city manager. It's going to cost, us, it's going to cost us a half a year's salary, and his salary is over one hundred and forty thousand. And and just to get just because we wanted to save a police chief, we're going to we're going to fire the manager and give him a, a say get out of get out of jail card while he goes and you know he or she goes and does whatever. That don't even make sense to me. Hey, well, if we don't trust our city manager any more than that, then what are we doing? Okay, so so. All right, now you guys took me to a road that I didn't really want to go down, but I will. My city manager, just a, a month ago, applied for another position. So is he happy here? I don't know. I don't know. See, that's and then this happens. Well, so that's my big question. I think we're getting off track. No, we're not getting off track. Well, no, I bring I'll, it all back in. I'll, if you don't mind me responding to that. Go ahead. 
few things. One, I, and maybe, maybe I'm um, viewing this wrong, I'm not viewing this as John and the current police chief and the current, Right. that's irrelevant to me. Right. And two, as a lifetime employee and never been a boss, I, look around. I, I, Brad, I, Councilman Brad, I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying. I do. I hear what you're saying. I hear that you that you're you know you're 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 worried about uh, you know the evaluation process. I really take slight offense to the fact that you feel like you don't trust the dietists up here. That's slightly no, and, no, no, not these seven people. Okay. Just in okay. general, okay. do I trust okay. staff doing the job? Do I trust the bureaucrats back here? Yeah, well, I am definitely no bureaucrat. Well, yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. but it, I understand what you're saying. This is bureaucracy, whether it's you it's, or I it's are bureaucracy. Yes, exactly. Right, I right. hear what you're saying. I hear exactly what you're so saying. So again, we have department heads that might be looking right now yeah. for other jobs. That's part of the. It is. It the, is part of. Being, it is part of the job. Being an it employee is, in the agree. workforce. That's just such stuff that happens. I agree. And and I, I'll, I don't know if I'll follow through with this, but I'll try to not make any decision based on. Yeah. Well, based on those particulars. This is not about so, John or Glenn or B or Tammy. It's about what's the best way to run an organization absolutely. for our manager and our police chief and our city clerk and our fire yeah. department. I know I hated I hated you, the the words masters. Um, I also hated the word um, that uh, was coming down the pipe and, and that it's called control. It's not about giving up control. It's not about say it's, it's not about servants of two masters. If you have an honorable chief of police and you have an honorable manager, they're going to do the work for the city. They're going to do the work for the people, and nobody's going to get in. Nobody's going to get in, in, into a situation. This got brought up for a, a reason, and it, and it didn't want to get really talked about out here in the public, so the public could hear. It would rather have been talked about behind closed doors. That's why I wanted it out here in the public, so everybody gets a chance to see, you know, transparency at its finest. I think we're done. I think we're going to get the sense of this ordinance 2306. I am going to I am going to ask for a change. So I'm going to ask for there's an action item. So I'm going to make a motion that we approve ordinance 23-006, but take the police department off of this ordinance uh, of this uh, city official appointments and putting leaving him as is, being supervised by the manager being hired by the manager and being fired by the manager with the approval as the fire department is with the city council. Second. Any more discussion? I hope it's clear because there we've been talking about this for months. You, That's, you've changed your mind about five times. Oh, I have not. I don't I changed my mind one time. I brought it one time. One time. Mind. The reason there's so much confusion going on right here is because there's also confusion in this police department. Wow. There's confusion that came forward when we tried to make budget. We ourselves cannot give any one employee direction. We I cannot agree with tell you. them what to do. I we agree have to go with you. through the manager to give anybody I have direction. not changed my mind five times. You I've changed my mind once. You yourself said you've been... I, I said I've been on the fence with this okay, until I'm, it's been presented of the why. Me, you've affected me while you were on the fence. And we, you ask for clarity. That is what we're trying to achieve in this department: is clarity. There's things that have taken place that we would have never known if it hadn't been brought forward. And those are the things we do have say in this department. If we go through him, if it's brought forward, we find. I'm, out I'm so other, glad uh, to know that you're wanting to go through the manager now. That makes me super happy. You guys have repaired your differences. I appreciate that. In on this. Oh, I'm just this one item? Okay. Gotcha. No, the clerk too. The clerk too. Okay. The clerk too. That's why it, we cannot discuss budget with the anybody. They, you know, we cannot give them direction individually. We do not hear anything from the departments. We can't. We can't even tell the captain we want him to have a juvenile, um, training stuff. We cannot tell the captain, that's what I want you to do. We can't do that. 
So until we get this thing straightened out, because this is the only mess we've been having for months, I just assume we have one master. Okay, is that all you have? So I have a motion. We would have had more if we had went in executive session. Arnold, voice it out. That's what we're here for. If you want to take shots at me, go for it. I don't care. No, that's, I I'm, you, I'm, I'm a big boy, buddy. I've, I've listened to you, Mayor. You've taken me both ways, and this is where I came up. Okay. This is where I stand So you're, the, you're, the, you're, 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 you're serving one master. That's fine. I get you. All right, so I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Wait a minute. What's, what, the what are we voting? The motion is that we leave everything, that we leave this 23-06 as is, as, as right here. But we're taking the fire chief and the police chief, and we're going to leave them as is. By the hiring, by the manager, the firing by the manager, the, the city council approval, the day-to-day -day operations are through the manager. 100%, the evaluation goes through the manager. Nothing's changing except your chance to vote. That's the American dream. And that, that, vote! Get out and vote! That, that is one of the options that has been like on the table. That's one of the options that have like been me. on the table here in the past was that the manager take care of everything the police department does, but all that stays with us is the hiring and firing of the police chief. Is well, that, what, is that what you're saying? I forgot what the answer what No, the it was, was a motion. It's the motion on the floor. That's the call of the question. And I, I said the emotion. I guess I don't understand. Do you have any more discussion? Council I don't Board? other than I'm hesitant to vote on it until I see it in writing because I'm not sure what you said. Okay. Yeah. How it will come out when it's... B, would you reread it? Re would you reread it back what my motion is so that the council could hear it? Well, you're, we saying, you're saying leave this as is. We don't know what as is. Uh, Mayor, did, you, did you guys not read this? Mayor, yeah. I, Go ahead, Sean. So I, I think, again, correct me if I'm wrong, what the mayor is saying is leave the ordinance as is with the exception of leaving the police chief as it currently is with the council approving the hire and the fire of the police chief and also leaving the fire chief as is. Leaving the fire chief um, as is. Because this doesn't change the fire chief to, from where it is today. The fire chief currently is approved by the, the members. Correct. Goes through you. Correct. And then you bring it to us right. for so, approval, right? you're saying right? don't change that either. Don't, it, it's, it's, that's how it is. Right. Yeah. So, I would say well, don't that's change not, that. That's not in yeah, here. That's so why the I don't only one change. you're really changing would be the police chief. So based on, on your motion, what you're saying is that we would use we would take this ordinance as is with the exception of the police chief in which case we would leave it as it currently is configured with the council approving the hire and approving the fire of the police chief and so the that, day and the day-to-day -day yeah. functions are yours right right and that 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 yeah that's staying as it and is. and all this right is that clear I, to everyone <laughs> to me is that not clear enough Who's doing the evaluations? Who's doing? He's doing the evaluation. The manager is. He's then currently why are we been involved. Doing it. Huh? Then why are we even involved? Then why are we involved in hiring the fire department? Because of volunteers. That's paid. Right, but again, it's no, a, no. It's, that's that's, a, that's, a that's it's a different it's, process. We got to use it's the word. Well, no, we're it, we're that's not the issue. The okay. fire chief wanted one boss. The fire chief in here said, "I want to have one boss." Okay. So he requested it. You all of you guys voted to do it. I voted against it because I said we had an over a hundred year institution. Why mess with it? But the fire chief said I would like to have one boss, so I went with the fire chief. He won. Then we found out these these no, are volunteers. We can't do that. Against it. We can't do that. These are volunteers. We can't do that. And in the past, it didn't change under Mr. Brubman. It, it was back when we did change the police chief. We okay he was leaving and then the human resource and the city manager well the human resource themselves decided to promote everybody then we found out that's not up to you to do that that's up to us to do that so we had to take it back to where it was but now it seemed like years ago the police chief was already picked out years ahead of time it had already been stated who was pretty much who was going to have that succession. And we had nothing to do with it. We weren't going to have anything to do with it. 
That's why I'm saying there, it's different in this department and we need to get a grasp on it. And we can't do it up here. We have to do it through one avenue at this time. So you're saying that when you say at this time, you're willing to bring this back in a year when it gets cleaned up? Well, I may not bring it back. Somebody else may. It may not work. I don't know. I don't want to tie a future council's hands. But you are. If you go with the yes vote, they will be tying up. Well, back. if you're going to make that argument, we're tying their hands either way. That's it. That's not a good way to put it. Uh, any council, any future okay. council can do whatever they want. So yeah. that's the motion on the floor, McGoy, Council McGoy. I, I, hope, that, sure. I hope that's <laughs> clear enough for you, you to make a not great quite. vote of yes or no. Wait, uh, let me so, just add this discussion. I, I can't vote for this 023, what we're talking about, 006 with verbal additions. I want to see the thing in front of me. It's confusing with all this back and forth and all. Mm -hmm. If okay, I'm going to bring that if back, I'm gonna, bring if that I'm back again, for this no. we, we got a motion on the court. Right. This there is a motion on the court. So yeah, this is the second read. So, uh, so um, Bill, how would we do that if we were bringing it? Can we bring back a second second read? Yeah, you, you, could, you could table this and direct staff to, in effect, simply put the mayor's made a motion. There's a second to uh, uh, leave the ordinance as is with the exception of not changing the hiring, the uh, council approval of the hiring and firing of, of the police chief. I do share the concern, it is complex, is maybe we then we then come back at the next council meeting with that change and let you vote on that. Okay. So the direction would be, sorry, go ahead. Mayor, members of council, I don't, I don't think it's that complicated. Essentially it's the not, ordinance is as it is, is. and then with the exception of Leaving the police chief the way he currently yes. is with the council. It's just a lot of passion up here right now. I know. That I was, know. I'm just... We need to quit bringing it back. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That was one of the options that I had heard about on table, the one you had proposed, that manager manages the police department. We decide who hires and fires. That's what you're saying. Yeah, and I think they're going to re they're going to write that. Listen, all I you, I you want my I want my manager to be able to manage. Trust yes, me, I do, Arnold. You know I love yes, you. Yes, I know. No, do you know I love you? Yes, I do. I know. That. Okay. So I want you. Yes, are, I yeah. want you to know that I agree and I support 100%. John, I support his decision. I support what he's going to do. I think he's going to to elevate the city where it needs to be. And I think the new chief of police that he's going to be able to bring on board that is going that we are going to appoint, I think is going to work hand in hand. I think John's going to be just blown out of the water of how well it's all going to work and we're going to sit back and say dang we didn't even have to do anything we just had to argue for about an hour well, i'm just hoping i know what y'all councilman say. mcgoy i was just going to say i'm i'm the reason i'm hesitant to vote on something that's abstract is that you I want mean, to see it i agree i mean i don't know how many times we've thought in a work session we presented here's what we want and when it came back it, it wasn't, didn't, it what, wasn't what it was I agree so with you, Councilman. I'm just there's one change to this ordinance. I think I understand what we're doing. Okay. I just don't like the part right. of voting on something that's not yep. decided. Let's let's bring it back. All right. Well, you have an amendment on uh, an uh, added to the ordinance on the floor right now. So, so I'm going to go ahead and withdraw my my oh. motion, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to change. You're going to change this this uh, this. Uh, um, um, this this ordinance. Well, is that what we want? Yeah, that's the direction. That's, that's how about my direction? How about let's vote? And if it dies, then you leave it. Then, if it dies, then we can go some other way, and we can make a decision tonight. And you can vote on something. If it, it if it goes, it. then then they can figure out how to write it. But, but you, if but, it doesn't you pass, you did, I agree with you, Councilman McCoy. But you just got through telling me that you didn't feel comfortable voting on something. I'm going to vote against it. Okay. Your motion. I'm going okay. to vote against that. Okay. I'm comfortable there. I just don't like not knowing what it's going to say. So, Mayor. And so I want it to come back with knowing what it's going to say. Well, if if you're voting, <laughs> but against, if it doesn't, if, if it doesn't pass tonight, first? it doesn't matter. So let's vote on the amendment. If if that's let's vote on the motion. Or Both. Or we have to vote on the amendment first. True. Right, and then for. And have a nice day. Yeah, I mean, yeah. How? I mean, it's 
So listen, they want to vote on it, even though they felt that there's not enough clarity. So we're going to vote on the amendment according to what uh, uh, Bill. Bill has said. And so B, would you please read back the amendment that's on for this motion so that we can uh, vote on this and get this over with? Because if it goes, you know, however it vote goes, at least I knew that I fought long and hard for my police department, which I believe in. Go ahead. So we have a motion to approve ordinance number 023006 to leave the ordinance as it has been presented with the exception of removing the part of the police chief with the hiring and firing process of the police chief, but allowing city manager to do the supervising and evaluating of the police chief. That is the motion that is up for voting. Okay. All those in favor of that motion. Oh. Are we voting to amend this or are we voting on the amended? You're That's voting the, the, if on you're the amendment, voting on right, what Bill? She just read. You're voting on the amendment. Yes, you're voting. You're voting on the amendment. Voting on the amendment. Okay, just the after. Yes, just okay. this after. So, all those in favor? Any opposed? Motion pass or doesn't pass. All right. So now, so now I need to. I want to hear a motion to approve ordinance twenty three zero zero six as is. So moved. Second. I. I thought you were going to table it. They didn't want to. They oh, wanted we to only go. needed to table they, if they were going to rewrite it. Listen, I didn't get, I wasn't going to have the votes right. on. Okay. So I, have, I I got a motion and a second to approve ordinance 23-006. As it is tonight. As yep. it is tonight. All those in favor? Any opposed? All right, motion passes. Thanks, guys.